and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. Listen, he has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, let's go on to the New Testament. Amen. Amen. We coming from 2 Timothy 4, 6 through 8 in the King James Version. For I am not ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Mm. I have fought a good fight, didn't he? I have finished my course, didn't he? I have kept the faith, didn't he? Henceforth there is laid up for me of a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give to me in the day. That's his day. And not me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. May the Lord have a blessing on the reading and the hearing of God's word. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's just good to be here. Amen. See people I haven't say, seen in a while, just like I said family. Um, I hear Uncle saying, take your time. <laughs> <laughs> every day. Every day. Not just every day. He didn't know he was speaking prophecy. Yes, yes, yes. He didn't know it. And when I was young, I didn't understand that. But as I got older, he was like, don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be anxious for anything. I ain't up here to preach, but he was speaking prophecy over you. Don't be anxious. Don't. Your time's going to come. Take your time. Every day. I know I've been changed. No, I've been changed. No, I've been changed. The angels in heaven sign my name. Let's sing it again. I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. Hallelujah. I Sign my name. He's in change, y'all. Yes. Let's look to heaven. Dear heavenly and most gracious Father. Mm. Lord, it's again that we come before your presence, Lord. Knowing that you have made us in your image, God. So, Lord, we come now and asking you to watch over the family, God. Lord, bless those that are standing in need right now, Lord. Lord, bless and comfort them, Lord. In your word, it said you would send the comforter. So send down your comfort, Lord. Heal the brokenhearted, God. Lord, release burdens, Lord. Lord, we come now and asking you to bless the preacher that's before your word, Lord. Lord, we, we, we just want to thank you. Lord... We just want to thank you. Lord, we, we just want to thank you for a man's life that you have taken back home, Lord. Lord, someone that walked this earth and, and believed what he said, Lord. Lord, we just thank you that you have kept him. And now he's rocking in the cradle of your arms, Lord. Lord, uh, we just thank you, Lord, because you have made him, Lord, and you have seen a time that, to bring him home, God. Lord, don't have to cry no more. Don't have to worry no more, God. Don't have to pay no more bills, God. Lord, you are, you are all-knowing and all-seeing God. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Ain't got to hurt no more. These pains, Lord, are gone. Lord, we know one day, Lord, you're coming back for the church, God coming back not for this building Lord for those that trust and believe in you God 
Lord, have us ready that when we get over yonder, Lord, we can hear again, take your time every day, God. Lord, so we just want to thank you for his life, Lord. Thank you. These blessings we ask in the name of Jesus, your adorable son, Lord, that hung on the cross, Lord. Oh, Lord, bled, suffered, and died for us. That we'd have that right to get up one day. Mm. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Friendship Baptist Church, 522 West Main Street, Johnson City, Tennessee. Resolution of Respect for Buford Odoms Sr. We are today comforted by the words of our Lord in Revelation 21 and 4, which says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Whereas in the divine providence of God, he has brought to a close the life of Buford Odom Sr. The officers and members of the Friendship Baptist Church feel that it is befitting to express our sympathy to the family during the homegoing of Buford Odom Sr. We commend you to him who knows best and will always do right. You are sincerely in our prayers. Whereas Buford Odom Sr. was a father, husband, and friend to so many at our church and across the community, and who truly loved the Lord, a very reverent, self-sacrificing man of God who would perform any task and instilled in his family and church to follow the same example. He loved his family with a strong but gentle countenance, which demanded the utmost respect and honor. Whereas Buford Odom Sr. served his church as the oldest living member of Friendship Baptist Church, and who loved the Sunday school and brotherhood, and was faithful until his health kept him from attending in per person. Be it resolved that we bow in humble submission to him who never makes a mistake and remind the family to be encouraged by re remembering this poem. A limb has fallen from the family tree. I keep hearing a voice that says, grieve not for me. Remember the best times, the laughter, the song, the good life lived while I was strong. Keep smiling and surely the sun will shine through. Continue my heritage, I'm counting on you. My mind is at ease, my soul is at rest. Remembering all, now I truly was blessed. Conden continue traditions, no matter how small. Go on with your life. Don't just stare at the wall. I miss you all dearly, so keep up your chin until the day comes that we're together again. Be it resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy kept in the church archives. To the family, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great, but we want you to know that we share in your sorrow but more importantly, we recognize that this loss is heaven's gain. Humbly submitted on the sixth day of April, 2024, the officers and members of Friendship Baptist Church, Reverend Lester D. Latney, Senior Pastor, Deacon Daniel Parks, Chairman of the Deacon Ministry.
bring you greetings from heaven, daddy's new home, a prepared place for a prepared people and for those who know the Lord for themselves. And if you don't know him, I recommend you get to know him because the hot weather's coming here in Johnson City, but it's good weather in hell. <laughs> so if you don't know the Lord for yourself, I recommend that you might find out what is necessary, that you might have a relationship with the Lord God Almighty. To this family, we thank God for the privilege of your allowing us to borrow daddy for the time that we had him. 95 years, that's a long time. 95 years of living, loving, and leaving a legacy to those who got a chance to know him. Daddy was kind of quiet. But that's understandable. The love of his life, Cat Odom was not quiet. <laughs> the love of his life was always on the move and always on the go. And most of the time, Daddy was just trying to catch up with her. And because Sister Cat was who Sister Cat was, she was one who whatever came up into her head would come out of her mouth. So you had to pray for what came up in her head because it was coming out of her mouth. All the years that I knew Sister Cat and Daddy knew this, we, he would laugh when we'd talk about it, she never would pronounce my name right. I would say my name is Latiny. And she said, Laddie? <laughs> I said, Sister Cat, my name is Latiny. Laddie? <laughs> and I finally said, Sister Cat, whatever you want to call me will be fine with me because she was going to say what she wanted to say anyway. <laughs> Thank God for Daddy. Thank God for the kind of man that he was. I remember my last conversation with him about a month ago it was and I called and uh, I, Erica answered the phone and I said let me I speak to Brother Buster and Brother Buster said she said Daddy Reverend Latin is on the phone he said who? <laughs> said Reverend Latin is on the phone who? <laughs> Daddy Reverend Latin is on the phone and she said oh 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 <laughs> So we started talking, and I said, Brother Buster, how are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? I said, I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm hanging in here. That's the kind of man he was, not only concerned about family, but concerned about others as well. What an awesome opportunity for him to know Christ and to be in God's presence forever and forevermore. The Bible gives us to know in the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verses 15, through 17, and I'm reading from the Holman Christian Standard Bible, which says, be careful, be careful attention then to how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And because Daddy understood that and because of his saying, uh, every day take your time, we will declare I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. God said it. I believe it, and that settles it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, church. Holy Spirit. Help me preach words of comfort to these, your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Brother Odom accepted Christ as Savior at an early age and was active in our church and loved the Sunday school, loved the brotherhood, loved being a child of the living God. In the beginning of the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter and the first verse, and continuing through the 5th chapter and the 14th verse, the Apostle Paul challenged the church and all God's people 
concerning the walk before the Lord. We were commanded by God to walk in humility, walk in unity, walk in separation, to walk in love, and to walk in the light of Almighty God. Now, in these words, we are challenged to add to those virtues the quality of wisdom. The word wisdom in our language means knowledge of what is true or right coupled with judgment and action. In the scripture, it carries the idea of understanding the will of God. And it is revealed in the word of God, coupled with the desire to live like God would have you to live day by day. So the call here is for those who believe in God to yield to the word of God in our daily walk. Daddy was concerned about how folk walked. Amen. And we are here and we hear the voice of God as it is revealed in his word that we are to live our lives revealed in the word moment by moment, day by day. Daddy Buster, Brother Buford, would flip the script on the Apostle Paul and say it like this. Every day, take your time. What does that mean, Brother Preacher? If you take your time every day, you will develop a diligent walk, a discerning walk, and a definitive walk. What is a diligent walk, Brother Preacher? I'm glad y'all asked me that. The wise walk is clearly defined in this particular verse, and Paul says to the church, to see then that you walk circumspectly. The word see means to look. You need to observe. The word circumspectly carries the idea of being diligent, accurate, and precise in your living. The command is for us to give attention to the way we walk in this world. We're living in some evil times, y'all. We're living in some very precarious times. We're living in times where we don't know whether we're going to make it back home or not. But if we don't wake up in the morning, everything is going to be all right. Why, preacher? If you fix it up with Jesus, everything is going to be all right. If you've ever seen anyone walk a tightrope, you see, then you know what Paul is referring to. The person on the tightrope watches where they place every step as they go along the journey. Are you watching where you go from day to day? As God's children, we must give due diligence to every step we take in this world. To do less is to guarantee that we will fall into the trap of the enemy. Satan has set a trap for each and every one of us. He wants to destroy us. He wants us to pull. He wants to pull us away from God. So we need to be careful where we go. We need to be careful how we live. We need to be careful what we see. The little kids were told, "Little eyes, be careful what you see. Little ears, be careful what you hear. Little feet, be careful where you walk." In the word of God, in 1 Peter, the 5th chapter and the 8th verse, he sets a trap for us and lies in wait to attack us, to destroy our walk with the Lord. But every man, every one of us, and don't think you all that in a bag of chips, you get tempted. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The devil knows everything that will he can use to get you off track from your relationship with God. Sisters, if you like a good looking brother, he'll bring him by your house. <laughs> Brothers, if you like a good looking sister, she'll show up at your house. <laughs> when he show up at your house, he have muscles in his eyebrows and you say, look and look. <laughs> We have to be careful what the devil throws our way. You can be drawn away. You are to be lured as a prey by the demon devil who wants to destroy you. The word entice means to catch thy bait. Satan knows what makes you tick. Doesn't he do it? He knows what is attractive to you. And like a hunter. He will place the bait in front of you so you can turn your back on the Lord. He's treacherous. Y'all know that, don't you? He's a dangerous enemy. Yet the only reason he has any power at all to deceive and destroy us is due to the fact that there's a sin nature 
on the inside of us. He can't make you mess up because you already were born to mess up. So you need to make sure you call on the Lord so that he can carry you from day to day. He would remind us not to walk, the Bible would teach us, don't walk like fools, but be wise. We got a lot of fools in the world right now. They carry cards that show they're fools. They walk like fools. They talk like fools. They conduct themselves like fools. And the problem is they think they know everything but don't know anything. Because if you don't know the Lord in the free pardon of your sins, you are a baited trap that Satan will destroy. Satan will try to keep you from loving the Lord. But Daddy would say every day, take your time. And we will listen to the Holy Spirit and stop sniffing around the traps Satan has laid for us. We would come out on top and be much better people. What does that mean, brother preacher? If you take your time every day, you will develop a diligent walk then you will develop a discerning walk. The Holy Spirit wants you to have a spirit of discernment about where to go and where not to go. Some places you need to avoid like the plague. Some places you need to run away from. Some places you need to go nowhere near them because all is there is heartache, misery, and pain, and nothing but trouble. It's on now, Brother Rick. So what is a discerning walk? We ought to walk accurately, literally, perfected, perfect in the world, but we also to walk with a discerning spirit. You got to let the Holy Ghost lead you. You got to let the Holy Spirit guide you. The word here says that we are to be redeeming the time. The word redeeming means to buy up, to deliver from loss. It was used in the culture of purchasing a slave in order that the slave ultimately might be able to be set free. The word time does not speak of a clock. It does not speak of minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, or years. The word he uses here is the word that speaks of a measured allotment of time. Paul is talking about the small window of time we have in this world. Even though daddy was here for 95 years, it's a small amount of time. It's a short amount of time. And every opportunity that we have to do the will of God, we need to grasp it and show the world God is able. And for God I live and for God I die. In other words, we are to deliver the allotted time we have been given in this world from the loss that Satan tries to give us. The phrase speaks about our walk in the Lord. It challenges us. To make good use of every opportunity for serving the Lord God Almighty. Peter says it this way in 1 Peter 1 and 17. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of person judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. If a man dies, the Bible teaches us in Job 14 and 14, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time. I will wait until my change come. The psalmist said in Psalm 39 and 4, Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. We're frail. We are small entities. But in God, through Christ Jesus, he can use us for greatness and he can bless us as well as others. You and I have been given a short window of time to live in this world. And at best, our lives are a vapor. We are here for just a few days. And we need to make the most of every opportunity we are given to serve the Lord. What should we do, preacher? You need to take time to pray. You need to take time to worship. You need to take time to share the word of God. You need to take time to be holy. You need to take time to read the word of God. You need to take time to honor the Lord every minute of every day. And the apostle Paul tells us the reason because the days before us are evil. God has placed us here as ambassadors. An ambassador speaks the word that has been directed by its government. Our government is not here. 
I know we are citizens here of Johnson City or wherever we come from. We are citizens of the state of Georgia, the state of Tennessee, and all these other places. But our citizenship is in glory. And we are children of the living God. And one of these old days, we're going to leave this world. And when it comes time for you to die, what kind of legacy will you leave behind? I pray that your life will be a production of following the will of Almighty God. And I would remind you that the word redeeming refers to buying a slave in order to set that slave free. And I don't know about you or that you can shout about it, but I can declare I'm redeemed, paid by a price. Jesus has changed my whole life. And if anybody asks you, no matter where they are, ask me at Food City, ask me at Kroger, ask me at the mall, ask me in the church, ask me on the road, ask me on the highway, ask me on the byway. I am redeemed. If you ask me, don't give them a last name, don't give them a first name, don't give them a middle name. I am redeemed. I'm a child of the living God. Mr. Buster would say, every day, take your time. What does that mean, preacher? If you take your time every day, you will develop a diligent walk, a discerning walk, and finally, a definitive walk. What is a definitive walk, brother preacher? I'm glad y'all asked me that too. Paul says, wherever ye be, wherever therefore be ye not unwise, but understanding that the will of the Lord is. And the word unwise means to be, quite frankly, stupid. And ignorant. That's right. Because if you don't know the Lord for yourself, I don't care how many schools you went to through or around. I don't care if you got on the bus and went to Harvard. I don't care what you did. But if you don't know the Lord for yourself, you will be baited by Satan and ultimately he will destroy you. Daddy would remind us, Daddy would remind you, seek the Lord while he yet may be found. Call upon him while he is yet near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the ungodly his thought and return unto the Lord. And God will pardon you. Won't he do it? Has God ever forgiven you for anything? If God forgave you yesterday, God will take care of forgiving you today. God will take care of forgiving you every day of your life. So every day, take your time because God is in control. If we're not careful, we will fall into the trap of busyness. We will allow the enemy to so will our calendar with good things that we wound up frantically running from one activity to the next, right. all the while missing out on the love and the life of Christ Jesus. We run here and we run there, hither and yonder, with our calendars, our smartphones, our schedules, thinking we have to do all those things for ourselves and for others. But we got a God who's already fixed it. He's already fixed the calendar. He's already fixed the time. He's better than any smartphone. And he will be able to take care of you from day to day. Life is not to be run like a maniac. I got to be here. I got to be there. I got to be the next place. I got, you don't have to be any place except where God wants you to be. And if you aren't careful, you will be running so fast that you will forget that God is the one who made you. God is in control of you. God is the one who has blessed you. You need to make sure you understand. God has a will for your life. You're not an accident. You are here because God has a purpose for you from day to day. Brother Odom would say to slow down. And slow down long enough Read God's word. Yeah. Meditate on God's word yeah. so you can understand God's word. We must take the Bible for ourselves and let the moments of our lives 
make sure that we don't allow them to slip out of our fingers without knowing the Lord God for ourselves. Because if you're not careful, you will wind up in the dark shadows on the edge of night searching for a guiding light while you're in your secret storm all the days of your life as the world turns because you're so young and restless, bold and beautiful, trying to live in another world. You and all my children. And then we find ourselves in General Hospital waiting on the doctor, searching for tomorrow because you forgot that you only got one life to live. Amen. That's why you need to learn. Take one day. Every day, take your time. And watch God make a way out of nowhere. Watch God develop you into a diligent walk, a discerning walk, a definitive walk. And when you walk with the Lord, what's going to happen to your brother preacher? I'm going home. Where the wicked shall cease from trouble. I'm going home where the weary shall be at rest. I'm going home where every day is a happy day. I'm going home where there's joy forevermore. And when I get there, how happy I will be. When I get there, the saints of God, I will see joy down. Joy down. Joy down. We'll be ringing. Angels will be singing. And they'll all welcome me when I get home. Oh, when I get home. The joy of seeing Jesus. The joy of being in the presence of God and the Holy Spirit forevermore. When we've been there 10,000 years. Bright shining has the sun. We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. I got a few questions I need to ask y'all while y'all in here. Since y'all being kind enough to stay and listen. How is your walk with the Lord? How is your walk with the Lord? Are you walking in wisdom? Are you walking in ignorance? Another question I need to ask y'all, since y'all are so kind enough to stay and not walk out. How is your relationship with the Word of God? Do you read it? Do you live it? Do you love it? Has God made a way out of nowhere and you can declare, I know I've been changed. The angels in the heaven just sign my name. Then you can ask and respond to the question, who wouldn't serve a God like this? Who wouldn't serve a God who'd wake you up in the morning? Allow you to have the blood running warm in your veins. The activity of your limbs. Who would serve a God like this? I got one more question that I need to ask y'all. Anybody want to go to heaven? Daddy's gone to be with the Lord. And because of the relationship that he had with Jesus, he can declare on his way home, Jesus the light of the world yeah. came down through 42 generations, right. lived for 33 years. He was born of a virgin. He bled, he suffered, and he died for you and for me. But that's not how. Oh, they hung him high. They stretched him wide. He bowed his head, and for you and me, he died. But I'm here to tell y'all, I got good news. That's not how the story is. <laughs> Three days later, he got up. Three days later, he got up. He three days later, he got up with all power in his hand. How did that happen, brother preacher? Heaven spoke. Hell shook. Humanity shouted. He lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me. How I know he lives. He lives within my heart. 
He's blessed me and crowned me with the love and kindness and tender mercy from the top of my head all the way to the soles of my feet. I feel him on the right. I feel him on the left. I feel him in front. He got my back and because he lives, I give him glory. I give him honor. I give him praise because of who he is. I can face tomorrow. Because of who he is, all my fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. And daddy would remind us every day, every day, what would daddy say? Every day, take your time. Come on, choir. Amen. 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 Brother Mitchell, you are in charge of 